Eric, you're gonna lose interest and then you're gonna move on to the next. It's like the one way you're totally consistent. No. Our mysterious stranger bested the knight and then removed his helmet. Can you guess who that was? It's Princess Teramis. Secretly entered the tournament to fight for herself. To choose her own future. And then the owl swooped down and ripped the little girl's face off and ate her eyeballs. Willow was a clumsy and endearing fantasy tale about a Nelwyn named Willow who wanted to be a great sorcerer and showed utmost bravery in order to defend a baby, a very important baby named Nora. That baby would come to be the savior of the world and the kingdom and whatnot and whatso and whatever. This TV show is the continuation of that story. Although I don't really see the need for it to really be continued because I assume that was supposed to be the happily ever after. But I guess with how sloppy that cute little movie was, there were a lot of loose ends to tie up. So that's what they attempt to do in this TV show. Willow, season one. We saw for the prologue talking about Alora Dannon, recapping the whole events of the movie, for nostalgia's sake, and so people can understand what was going on without watching the movie. They talk about Willow and when the music is playing it sounds so endearing and everybody remembers Willow and everyone likes Willow yay but the minute it mentions Mad Mardikin who honestly fought the hardest in the last end of the movie risking his life for the baby and dedicating it to the Nelwins, his introduction by this character makes him sound like a Disney villain and that's immediately off-putting for me failing courage the other an impossibly conceited thief liar and rogue Mad Martigan was the man I'd marry. What can I say? I was young. Wow, way to throw shade at the person who fought on the side of good and fight against your evil mother. He's one of the most beloved characters of the first movie, but yet this woman is like, nah, I'm gonna lead with him being a freaking impossible conceited liar and a thief. And while those things were true, he redeemed himself in the end. So why are we continuing the story leading with that? Together we defeated my mother, Queen Vavmoda, and freed the kingdom of Tyra. So your mother was the most evil bitch in the entire world and was the reason for all the bad things happening, but yet when you remind and recall us of her, there's no epithets to precursor her name? Really? You leave all the insults for the man who went up against her and fought her or fought her army? But yet, Queen Badmordia, who was literally trying to sacrifice a baby and killed many other babies and used the ritual to throw this baby into the netherworld, now all she gets is a simple, oh, well, she was my mom. Looks like some of that evil rubbed off, didn't it? Good grief. Anyway, Willow had a vision, and the vision was that one day, as an ancient evil would rise again and destroy the future empress. And if she dies, everybody goes into a dark age, so Alora, not Anora, was hidden away. Nobody knows who she is. We immediately are introduced to two characters, Jade and Princess Kit, the daughter of the woman narrating the story, who has the really bad attitude. Sorsha, the queen's daughter, the evil queen's daughter. I feel like it's important to remind people of that. I swear to goodness, this character is the most insufferable character character in the entire show. How is it that she's supposed to be the main character, but she is so annoying and full of herself? It's almost like she's the freaking evil queen reincarnated. About it. You know, there's skill and there's talent. And I just happen to have both. I don't have a generous amount of arrogance. These guys want to be knights. And it's so clear that they like each other the way the other girl was looking at this girl's face like she wants to have it for freaking supper. Hello. Buy me dinner first. What the hell? Is this a fantasy story or a freaking romance? Meanwhile, we see the annoying character's twin brother, Erk, <laughs> who's in love with this girl who's very naive named Dove. <laughs> the white-haired, ultra medieval Santa tells Eric that his mother's coming. Why is he freaking biting hilts? Ew, gross, bro. No, 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 no. Ugh. And then we get some of the relationship banter between Eric and Princess Kit. And I swear to God, what really takes me out of it and makes this feel as though there's no immersion or passion inside of it is that these people are speaking as though they're not a part of the time or the place. Just, and then you're gonna move on to the next. It's like the one way you're totally consistent. No. I've laid out a gown for you to wear. You're picking out my clothes now? Or am I six years old? Well, I shouldn't have to. Why is she the only one speaking like she doesn't belong in this world? It feels like everybody else is taking their character seriously, but this girl was just like, ah, screw it. I don't really care. You want me to be a part of this? I'm gonna speak the way I feel comfortable speaking. Screw trying to do an accent. Screw trying to talk as though I'm with the time. This is the way I talk normally. This is the way I'm gonna talk. This is how you make money? 
acting, well, not acting, and just literally being yourself, which doesn't really say much because this woman is insufferable. And we meet Ballantine, the guy who's really close with Jade and like a father to her who has the deepest voice I have ever heard in the animal kingdom. Apparently, Princess Shit, Kit, sorry, is meant to marry this guy who they make look like a mouse. Like, he doesn't physically look like a mouse. I mean, like, his personality, I mean, well, well, whatever. Sorsha is setting up her daughter to marry this dude's son because it's just the way things are, even though Sorsha had her full pick of the litter who she was gonna marry, which was Mad Mardikin, because she fell in love with him immediately because he said some nice words to her. Then she has a nerve to tell her daughter that she doesn't have a choice. Meanwhile, the queen has a friend in the prisons. I mean, man, Sorsha, nothing has changed. She still likes men who she considers to be wantons. Princess Kit, on her wedding announcement, dances with Jade and gets mad when she hears that Jade is going to go with Valentine to be a knight. She's been accepted to train with the Shining Legion, which is a really good thing. And then Kit gets mad because she doesn't want Jade to leave, yet you expect Jade to sit down there and lick your twat and endure you being married to someone else. Wow, the entitlement with this one is so strong, it's knocking me on my ass. And this woman acts so out of character for the time period. It's almost as like she time traveled to this area and dimensional traveled to a place where she clearly doesn't belong. And honestly, it takes me out of it. We're getting married. That's weird, right? Why is it weird? You grew up in this environment and this culture. Why would it be weird to you? It's weird to her because they're getting married and they don't love each other. And granted, yes, her mother got to be with someone who she claimed she loved. But everybody else around you that you know of, having been royal to yourself, you little entitled bitch, is getting married to people that they don't necessarily love. It's not like this is supposed to be an alien concept to you. Why is this lunatic always biting his lips? Is his top lip like physically bigger than the bottom one and that's what he's doing? What in the freaking pirate parrot is he doing? It's so annoying. Oh shit, I think it really is. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Why? You don't even know me. Oh boy. Here we go. Don't know why this is coming as a shock to her and her mother and everybody around her who exists in this realm would have known that and would have taught her that. Why is she making a scene? Even her girlfriend and her brother are trying to calm her down. Oh my God. She is the most annoying character. And there is a handful of shows where I've seen annoying characters, but she makes the top list. But she doesn't want to do the whole marriage thing if she's not going to choose who she's going to marry. So yucka yucka. Princess Idiot's mother grabs her away and says she's embarrassing everybody and herself and her mom. She claims that she's acting like a petulant child, and she is, while Kit is like, oh, but I'm a prisoner. If you think I'm tough, you should have met mine. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. I just spoke to Graydon. He was actually not such a terrible guy. If you just get to know him, he's going to talk to the king, smooth everything over, explain I think you should stick to chasing girls rather than sticking your nose in matters that you're incapable of understanding. Excuse me, bitch? So your son is stepping up to the plate and adulting, which is something you've wanted him to do. He's trying to defuse the situation and let his mother know and the daughter, swage both of them to keep them from fighting that everything is okay. There's no need to be angry and violent and toxic. He wants to let them know that he smoothed over everything so they don't have to worry about that in case that's something else that they're worried about, which is the very reason why the mother brought the daughter in in the first place because she claimed that the daughter was embarrassing her and she's worried about how it looks to the king whose prince, his son, is supposed to be marrying her daughter. And having heard this, the mother turns around and insults her son for doing the right thing because he's a man. He couldn't possibly know what they're talking about. Like the viciousness in which he says that seems as though it was a liberty taken by the writers to just put that in to insult him because you know what? He can't possibly be seen as someone who is good and takes initiative because how dare he? I already feel bad for him. The both of them are insufferable. God, I hate them both. Right after that. I didn't ask for your help. No, you're gonna get it anyway because you're my sister and I love you despite your winning person. Personality. Everybody loves you because you're so charming and fun. As long as they don't expect anything from you. Oh my god. Oh my god. Were they trying to make us hurt? You know what? This is it. This is the character. He is the prince. He is going to have a lot of things expected of him. He is going to rule an entire civilization and all of the rough decisions are going to be left up to him. You have to get married to someone, oh my God, that you don't like. Not like you can't sleep outside your marriage anyway, right? And you're going to have to produce children. It sucks. 
It really does, but that's the extent of what you're expected to do. How dare she? You get some more lovey-dovey stuff between him and Dove saying that they actually do love each other and Dove is jealous because he's with those other girls. Don't care. Kit says she's leaving to her girlfriend. Then there's an evil that comes to the castle. This thing in this Resident Evil freaking cage head. And while they're all fighting, the queen says, we're under siege and she lets go of this Jafar looking guy. Meanwhile, the characters from House on Haunted Hill end up taking the prince and kidnap him because of course they do. Apparently these beauties are workers of the queen who is still alive somewhere. Valentine, the guy with the voice of Rolling Thunder, gets poked by this hot spear and Mouse Man here feels bad because he didn't do anything because he's scared. Realizing that Elk is gone, Elk wants to go look after him, of course, because he's her love and she can't possibly just let him be out there alone kidnapped. He's royalty, not like the royal guard and all the hosts of the army that the queen has are going to go after him. It tells her mom she has to go find her brother. The mother says, yes, go. I've known Eric since the day he was born, and he's as close to a son as I'll ever have, at least that I'm aware of. So Discount Santa wants to go after him too, because, you know, as you said, there's this kind of Lord of the Rings journey, and them talking, Kit being a bitch, and the freaking shimmer in the distance, which is like a protective thing over the whole area, and it, they just basically reuse the shimmer from the freaking Annihilation movie. It's exactly the same thing. Great originality there. We discovered there was a force field formed by Raziel, remember? The whole, the witch from the first the movie? Yeah. Everyone's talking about Alora and how she might be dead when we know that one of these people is Alora, it's so clear who it is. Oh my god, they're touching, they're like so in love with each other, and it's so annoying! Reason it feels forced is because we're thrust in with these characters, and it would have been nice if we got a little bit of lead up to them eventually falling in love with each other, but no, it's just thrust in and they automatically just like each other. There's no backstory to how they met each other, or how Jade could have fallen in love with somebody as tasteless and egotistical and annoying as this person. Unless she has star crazy slits in her eyes, and if this person had not been a princess, she probably would not have been with her. Anyway. Alora wakes up and gets ahead of everybody else to be by herself, uh, freaking idiot. And while she hears these whisper things, there's a tree across a cat. What is this, a lamb before time? And she goes through the shimmer. Visuals are decent though. You're bickering. Eric doesn't have time. If you're not vigilant at each moment, I swear you will not survive. <laughs> oh, so somebody who they've known their entire life just died and they just act like it was a comedic effect like like someone didn't just lose their life that was very close to their family interesting wow how brave they're running away from these bone reaver people they're telling the guy in front of them jafar to stop and he jumps off the cliff with his horse and all the other horses follow because the horses in these these freaking shows can't think for themselves and they fall off a cliff in shallow water and their horses are still okay as far as i know these horses aren't magic these people aren't magic how in the flip-flop bird are these horses legs not broken like I get this is a fantasy, but the whole part of the immersion of it is that when magic comes about to show things that are impossible, even the characters in universe are amazed because some of them don't even know magic exists or they don't really think of it as being anything. Normal humans can't use it. That's the whole point. It would have been interesting if people were like, man, those horses should have broken their legs. But then if the horses could do that, why wouldn't the bone reavers who are close with their horses follow after them? This guy was yelling a word over and over again to make his horse jump off the cliff and not break its legs. And when they ask him what word he used it was an ancient word that meant stop so there was no magic involved i just think you should be in love with someone before you commit to spending the rest of your life with them right oh my god you said the right thing i know right actually it takes a lot more than love or being in love with someone to spend the rest of your life with them i mean by her mother's own logic she seemed as though she was sorry to marry mad mardik and she was in love with him how many guys have girls and guys dated that they regretted and they were totally in love with them? Are those the people you should have married? What horrible advice. Anyway, they're looking for Willow because their mom said if they find Willow, he can help them and blah, blah, blah. The Nell one that they found pretends to be Willow until Ego, the planet-sized head here, 
says that, well, we need the greatest sorcerer because we're looking for, you know, blank, blank, blank with Alora, blah, blah, blah. Willow then comes out knowing that they are who they claim they are because he knows their mother, Sorsha. He tells Princess Kit that her brother is alive and he's a prisoner of the Wither Crone in some city that lies beyond the Shattered Sea. The Shattered Sea across it is the unknown. Willow sees Dove and he touches her inappropriately, sorry, and he touches her and he shows the mark on her arm. It's revealed that she is Elora, the baby from the first movie. Oh, how good to see you. He says it's up to her now. The best hope against evil is coming to destroy us all. Even though that's kind of, kind of, kind of what it was in the first movie too. Because she's special. It's like the same movie, the same premise all over again. She's grown up now. <sighs> and that's the end of episode one. Episode two starts off with a flashback with Sorsha telling Willow of Sorsha talking to Willow after they haven't seen each other for a while because Willow has a message and says, you know what? I had a vision that there's going to be a great evil. I'm High Aldwin now. I've become what Rosella always said I would, a great sorcerer. My dear friend. Why does it look so condescending when she's about to talk to him after he says something and she leans down and then starts talking to him like a child? Sorsha has no social awareness. You are the bravest man I've ever known, but you're not a great sorcerer and you never will be. Wow, that's cold. In the present, Willow takes everyone to meet the underground Nelwyn village. His daughter, who is his daughter in real life, by the way, is so excited to finally meet Elora. She was the one who found the baby first. They do the finger thing from the first movie. Oh my god, nostalgia, the bones, blah, blah, blah. Oh my god. Turns out that she can't be magical because she doesn't know which, which is the right finger, just like he didn't know which is the right finger in the movie, remember? Oh, I baby. Hi, baby, dad. Sure, I baby. Valentine is affected by the evil and doesn't realize it. And while he's listening to the queen, who now knows who Laura is, the evil can see and hear what he's seeing and hearing. Mostly episode is Laura bitching about how she wants to save Eric and her not being cut out for this. Half of this douchebag being jealous of her and not believing that she's actually magical. She tells Willow that she does need him to protect her and she will try to learn magic. Since her identity has been hidden from her, she didn't get a chance to use magic. And so her ability to use it has completely gone away. Or at least it's buried very deeply. But she's having a hard time and Willow is losing his patience. Laura is always second guessing herself. There's more talking, mostly talking. Mouse man being a shrink, telling her how amazing she is and she should have known that. Oh my God, are they gonna end up together? Willow had a vision that after the, the princess is dead, he couldn't save her and it's just death and destruction everywhere, even though he can only see the immediate region. You don't actually know if the entire world is affected by this. The princess stays up all night trying to do the spell to grow the tree that Willow taught her to do. She gets frustrated and says the words over over and over again, which is honestly a more realistic interpretation than what happened with Willow in the first movie and how he learned magic. At least they did a good job showing him teaching her and actually making the effort and doing that one spell instead of him suddenly knowing, like he did in the first movie, how to do spells all of a sudden that he wasn't taught. The princess is frustrated and doesn't notice somebody crawling up on her. It's Valentine, but he's like a zombie now. As cliche as it is, the tree starts growing after she's kidnapped. Oh my god, she can use magic now. Wow. It tries to ask IRL Jafar more about her father because he knew her dad. Laura is missing. Again. Miss Muffin. I really wish this person would just keel over. Like literally nothing else would have changed in the show if she had not been in there. What is even the purpose of her being there? The story would have just been as great, mom, maybe even better, if she just never existed. And we had Prince Eric and he got kidnapped and Jade trying to prove herself to the queen is what the whole plot was. Like she's so irritating that she's actually making the show worse. Not just because of her attitude, but because she is the only individual within this entire show that doesn't seem to be taking her character seriously and feels like she belongs in some CW show in the 2020s. Um, that's really... Oh my god, yeah, like totally. Valentine is seen with Jade bent over his horse, and when Jade sees him, she realizes that he's sick and she wants to help him. This guy's like a father to her. She knows that he's not doing this on his own, but he still wants to fight. Reluctantly, Jade pulls her sword, ready to fight for the orders of the queen. There's a big skirmish, and Mouse Man tries to free Elora. I'm rescuing you. There's no one else available? Oh, really, bitch? Okay, my bad. <laughs> well, you know what? You're right. Let me leave these ropes and leave you tied up on this horse. See ya. Like, really? That's when we also discovered that Princess Shit over here can't actually fight, and Jade had to save her. Solo throws a smoke bomb, and the princess is kidnapped once again. Bad magic is corrosive. It eats away at you until there's nothing left. I'm sorry, Graydon. When did you become High Oldwin? I oh, know. That's right. You're not. I am. What 
in the insecure what in the what is with the characters in the show i just don't understand they're so insufferable the only reason i'm even watching the show is because willow's in it and he's insufferable what the hell that guy said nothing wrong he's talking about the effects of this magic about what the corrosive magic does to you does willow think that he is the only person in the entire universe that knows magic considering all those other people that knew magic before he even did that's so rude and sorry willow as much as i like you as your stupid character is dumb you're not in your freaking Nelwyn village you don't get to talk to people like that just because they're spouting their opinion which happens to be quite plausible you haven't added anything to it this person did the poor mouse man guy is like my father thinks I'm an embarrassment I just freeze up whenever there's danger he clearly is someone who has a lot of knowledge and that should be fostered so then Willow says no they're not gonna kill Alora. her spirit's just gonna be reborn if they do they're gonna banish her to some freaking netherworld in Minecraft Alora saves her herself and these two get upset at each other it makes me wonder how they would have even had a successful relationship with how repugnant and combative the dumb princess is the princess is mad at her she's like every time we spar i beat you i can take care of myself i don't need you to save me so jay tells her um yeah the only reason that you won against me every time is so wait a minute oh shit you let me win oh i hate you now and laura stumbles upon these two women and this person looks familiar who is this person Anyway, she is the best character. I love her. Right now, she's the most likable character, this little lumberjack woman. Her friend doesn't talk. She's just there to, like, affirm. When they find out she's Alora, they're like, oh, we'll serve you no matter what. Then Valentine shows up, and she's like, haha, you're, you're a damn annoying person. You, you want to hurt this little girl? It ain't gonna happen. I swear, this woman, I would have loved to see her as Doctor Who. Valentine is rotting, and when the woman thinks that she's best at him, she gets stabbed in her freaking belly. And freaking dies best character and actor that we've had in the show so far and she's dead now you know valentine kills the other woman who basically left the princess by herself she's like ha -ha. yeah so my girlfriend promised you that i wasn't in on that i was just being there for moral support i don't even know who you are see ya but elora pleads for her to stay alive they kill her anyway and then valentine gaslights her and tells her it's her fault elora says she knows magic and she's big and bad don't mess with her valentine says all right show us what you got then but before she can the others come to save her meanwhile annoying pipsqueak asshole is down here with Jafar dude he lies to her about finding something that the father and him had hid down there obviously he's a con man or he's hiding something they fight a bunch of were rats and while Jade is being bested oh my god the princess blasts through the boulders like a freaking kaiju and saves her, her girlfriend while the prince tries to lead Alora away from the danger Willow wants everyone to stop fighting with each other now and get back to the wagon the wagon gets struck by lightning and blows up I swear to God, this is what happens. The other Nelwyn is killed when he's thrown violently into the rocks. Willow is upset because his friend got hurt badly and is gonna die. And that's when we see him actually do magic. Finally, some of the action we're looking for in a show called Willow from Willow. <laughs> Willow says he can save his friend. Don't die. And his, his friend is like, no, don't waste your magic. Really? Wasting your magic would be bringing you back to life so you could see your family again? That's wasting? He says, I died doing what I was supposed to do. Wouldn't it make sense to live so you could keep doing that thing, which is protecting him and Alora? You know, wouldn't it make sense to keep living? So there's a higher chance of the people you're trying to protect being protected? Anyway, it's very sad. But anyway, since Willow waited to the last moment to use that power to drive out the evil when he could have used it before, obviously, we now see that he's driven out the evil from Valentine as well, who, even though he is rotting, is himself. He tells Jade that Elora must be protected and how proud he is of Jade. Like, Jade is the actual favorite story here. The, movie, the story should be called Jade. The show should be called Jade. Jade kills Valentine or finishes him off, puts him out of his misery, however you want to say it. And then the others continue their journey up the big scary steps. But the prince guy is not doing so well. It turns out he is the evil Mark II. Turns out they're right by Nakmar. And that's how episode three ends. Show's not the worst show I've seen, but it is kind of like very generic. Don't get me wrong, so was the original movie. But for something called Willow, he doesn't feel like he's in the center of it at all. They need to have ditched that princess character. She's marring the taste of the show. Other than that, it's it's whatever. Um, but I can honestly say say if Willow wasn't in it, I would not have watched it. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Ultiori. You ask, we answer.